In this video we're going to take the templates and create the rows for the puzzle pieces. And we only really have to do one of these rows because we have alternating pieces, which means we have protrusions facing down, up, down, up, or left, right, left, right. And we're going to do the longest row, which is this one here. So just in case, I'm going to make a copy of the two templates that we made. And I'm going to move the one that's facing down roughly into position over here. And we have to snap all the gap splines together. So I'm going to move the object axis of each of these two splines. So let's switch on enable axis and snapping. And I'm going to move the object axis and snap it to this point here. On the other spline, I'm going to move the object axis over to here. So I'm going to move this up and put it into position about here. And let's make a copy, move it over. And we'll need another copy. And let's move this over to here. And I'm going to make some copies of the spline that's facing down. So now I'm going to move all of these splines into position. So let's select each of these and line them up with a reference image. Okay, so now what we have to do is snap the splines to each other. And I'm going to switch off the background image and let's select this spline. And I'm going to switch on snapping. Make sure you have blind snap selected here. And I'm just going to move this spline down and snap it to the other one. And we're going to do this for the other splines as well. And next we can select all of these splines here and connect them. And of course, the segments are not yet connected. So let's switch off snapping, grab one of the selection tools, and I'm going to select these two points here, right click and weld them together by left clicking anywhere in the viewport. And if you hit spacebar, you can go back to the last tool you use, which is the live selection in this case. And I'm going to select these points, hit spacebar, weld these points together, spacebar, select these two points and delete them. And we're going to repeat this process for the rest of this row as well. So two more to go. Okay, so this is the first row finished. And you can see the spline is not really matching up with the reference image, but that's okay. If we start moving those points around, we're also going to change the curves down here and we will get corners and the lines we try to make straight when we created the gap splines will no longer be straight. So it's okay to deviate a bit from the reference image. I'd rather keep the shapes consistent and perfect. 
So now we have finished our first row and we can use this as a template. Let's call this template horizontal and we can use this spline to create all of the other rows for the jigsaw puzzle.